We are learning more information about the raid that took down ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. His death resonating around the world. The countries involved in the US-led operation are boasting about their contributions and sharing intelligence, but the international cooperation it took to take out one of the world's most wanted men would likely be impossible to repeat. CNN has learned the US decision to withdraw from Syria had a major impact on the planning of the operation. An official tells CNN that the raid would have been possible without U.S. troops in Syria and the partnership with the Kurdish-led SDF. Well, for the very latest, let's uh, get you to Sam Kiley, who uh, is at the Turkish-Syrian border investigating the compound location uh, very close to there. Ben Wiedemann with me here in Beirut. But I want to start uh, this hour with CNN's Barbara Starr, who is at the Pentagon, uh, with more information on the intelligence, Barbara, that led to Baghdadi's capture. Well, Becky, it appears that the intelligence began to come together late last week, and it was at that point commanders went to President Trump and he made the decision to go after the world's most wanted terrorist. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the leader of ISIS, spent years hiding and on the run before U.S. Special Operations Forces got him. Special Forces used the cover of darkness overnight as eight helicopters carrying as many as 100 U.S. troops landed at a compound in northern Syria. They entered after blowing holes on the side of the building, believing the front door might be booby-trapped. President Trump golfed in the early afternoon of Saturday, getting updates all day before returning to the White House Situation Room at 5 p.m., where the president said he watched the raid as it happened. Well, I don't want to say how, but we had absolutely perfect, as though you were watching a movie. It was, uh, that, that and the technology there alone is, is really great. The president said the special ops teams were met by local gunfire on the ground that was quickly squashed. At least two ISIS fighters were captured and 11 children taken out of the house. Two of Baghdadi's wives were killed during the raid. According to the president, Baghdadi was chased into a tunnel inside the compound by military dogs while bringing three children with him. The tunnel came to a dead end where he eventually detonated a suicide vest that killed him and the children. We tried to call him out and ask him to surrender himself. He refused. Uh, he he uh, went down into a subterranean air, air, area. And uh, in the process of trying to get him out, he detonated a, a suicide vest, we believe, and uh, killed himself. During the two hours they were on the ground, U.S. forces collected extensive intelligence that must now be analyzed. We took highly sensitive material and information from the raid, much having to do with ISIS, origins, future plans, things that we very much want. Trump said Baghdadi was quickly identified through an on-site test with lab technicians using DNA samples the U.S. already had of him. He will never again harm another innocent man, woman, or child. He died like a dog. He died like a coward. The world is now a much safer place. It is expected that Baghdadi's remains will be buried at sea. The Pentagon is not saying whether that has actually happened yet. Becky? Bob, a new information um, that it was one of al-Baghdadi's closest companions who provided intelligence that led to his capture. Who is this companion? And what made him give up information on his leader? Uh, well, we don't know what made him give up because we're not, uh, the, that interrogation is not available to us, of course. Uh, people often, once they're captured, uh, and this was somebody who was a close uh, ally, colleague of his, if you will, um, there's a lot of reasons they might decide to talk. But in the region, officials at least are saying they believe that played a key role in getting to him. But I have to tell you, there's a lot of information moving around, an awful lot of different players taking credit for it, Becky. Mm. Power of stars uh, at the Pentagon. Sam, we uh, want to bring up some uh, video of the aftermath uh, here, showing burned out car pots, pans, um, children's toys. Um, what can be learned from uh, the compound, uh, as we might call it? And, and I know that the operation also elicited 
uh, what's being described as a treasure trove of intelligence that may lead to more raids on the group. What details do we have? Well, there are no details of what intelligence was uh, gathered there, but uh, apart from what would... Uh, Revealed, if you like, by Donald Trump, Becky, saying that there was uh, a lot of intelligence that was collected uh, in, in that compound. But if we look at the patterns elsewhere with the killing of bin Laden or uh, less famously the killing of a character called Abisayev, who was bin Laden's, uh, sorry, uh, Baghdadi's kind of... Um, Consigliere, when uh, there was a raid on his compound, that yielded uh, a large amount of information, uh, computers, computer drives, and so on, that gave very revealing detail about, in those days, about the structure of the so-called Islamic State, the players, the people that were there uh, in place who were unknown to intelligence agencies making decisions that then, obviously, they then go up the target list or go onto the target list that they were unknown at all. It was very interesting that after this attack against uh, Baghdadi, there was another attack, the details of which have yet to emerge out of uh, the Pentagon, but certainly the Kurds within the Syrian Democratic Forces saying that that was against the spokesman for the so-called Islamic State. We haven't been able to establish this uh, independently yet, but this is their claim uh, in an area under Turkish control. They say that they uh, gave the intelligence to the US that then conducted airstrikes. Now there was an airstrike in this location in which one or two people were killed so that may have been connected to this operation. It may have been part of the operation altogether but there is an ongoing steady drumbeat of attacks against Islamic State and Al-Qaeda leaders the world over. So any kind of intelligence that leads to the triangulation from the perspective of the United States in particular to a much lesser extent countries like the United Kingdom, that that will mean that they go up a target list for kill or capture. And these are operations that extend all the way from Somalia uh, to Afghanistan, Becky. Yeah. Ben Wiedemann, uh, al-Baghdadi may be the ultimate national security target and the intel gathered um, during this operation, clearly hugely significant. But let's remind ourselves, you were for 50 days uh, watching the demise of the caliphate in northern Syria uh, earlier this year, where thousands of fighters, ISIS wives and kids were sort of walking away from that caliphate in sort of apocalyptic scenes, all of whom, you remind me, will have been interviewed. So this intelligence gathering operation has been going on for years. How much do they know about this group and its ideology and the potential for further attack well certainly in terms of the sheer massive intelligence it's gigantic because unlike al-qaeda where a lot there never really was a surrender by al-qaeda isis surrendered to the united states the syrian democratic forces and others and what we saw was day after day hundreds of fighters their family members their children being trucked out the men were separated one by one the kurds would take their picture get their name get their fingerprints and then they would be handed over to a American, French, and British intelligence officers who were looking specifically for anyone involved, for instance, in the attacks in Europe, but the broader intelligence that could be gotten out of these people. So it was a gold mine of intelligence. I think this indicates why, you know, it took several years to get bin Laden. What, Tora Boro, I was there in December 2001. He wasn't found and killed for 10 years. The demise of ISIS was in March. Here we are in October. Baghdadi is dead. So clearly uh, the coalition, the Kurds and others have collected a huge amount of intelligence on the leadership, the methods, the plans, and certainly in that sense, the way it was done in terms of capturing these people, pumping them for intelligence has clearly borne fruit. And Wiedemann with me here in Beirut, Sam Kaili on the Turkish-Syrian border. So both of you, thank you. On the operation that killed al-Baghdadi was named after American Kyla Mullah. She was held hostage by ISIS and killed in 2015. Her family say they are feeling a roller coaster of emotions, but are grateful to the special forces and to the Trump administration. Well, the father of a Jordanian pilot who was burned alive by ISIS is also reacting, saying he is glad that the terrorist leader is dead. 
I am proud and happy on this day after hearing of the death of Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. This corrupt man, this insect, this virus that spread throughout the body of not only the Arab nation but also the Muslim nation. He distorted the image of Muslims and Islam. Well, ISIS is responsible for thousands of deaths, including those of several American journalists.